All right, it's Saturday morning. Um, I'm gonna start getting ready to pour some concrete here. I got my great stuff and put it in the uh, form here. So I gotta get a knife and trim that out now that it's set up. Actually, it's not even great stuff. It's off-brand great stuff because it was $2 cheaper a can and for what I was doing with it, I didn't want to waste money on the good to great stuff. So, but I just got down here today and noticed this. Apparently, we're compressing the concrete slightly. Must have been a hollow spot under there. So, got to figure out what we can do here because it dropped it. Oh, about a half inch. This one's fine. So, but anyway, I'm going to get the diesel heater fueled up here and get it burning so that we can get some heat built up. And Not that it's going to last very long because once we get this poured, I got to take that piece of plywood off so that we can get access to the block so that I can get the block set and then we can put that back on, but... Anyhow, we'll catch you guys here in a minute. All right, I got all the foam trimmed out of the form, so that's ready to go. I got the garden hose strung down here. Um, unless Dad has a better idea, the best way I could think to get the concrete over to the form is just a five-gallon bucket because you ain't going to get a wheelbarrow to do it, and you can't get the mixer down there to do it. So um, I got a five-gallon bucket cleaned up. I think that's everything I did. So now just waiting on dad to get here so we can get rolling.
concrete poured. I was getting nervous there for a minute. I didn't know if six bags was gonna do it after we put the first three in. It's like, oh boy. Peter, get your nose bag. But we ended up having just enough. I was able to put a little, little bit in the bottom of that hole where I took that step out. Um, unfortunately, some of Dad's concrete tools were not in the toolbox where they belong, so he doesn't know he was gonna go home and look and see if they got put somewhere else because I need an edger to strike the edges off and it was not in there like it was supposed to be and his he had a mag float he thought he had two of them neither one of those were in there so finishing it was kind of a pain because all he had was a wood float which did the job but so he was gonna go home and see if he could find the stuff and if not, I'm going to have to go buy a couple. The hardware store in town should have them, but uh, teeter. Don't put nose prints in it. But this was my, this was my uh, observation experience. Because um, I'm not going to say I haven't poured concrete before, but last time I poured concrete, I was probably only six or seven years old when we were building the playground at our old elementary school. And a bunch of the parents got together one weekend and put up all the playground equipment and stuff and we took the cement mixer down and we were use that mixer to mix all the cement for setting all the posts on the new playground equipment and that was the last time i poured concrete which when you're that old you're in the way more than anything so it'd been forever since i've ever seen it done so this was my watch dad do it so that i know what to do and then when i when we go to do the post i'll pour the pads for those myself so but at this point, got to see what dad comes up with for tools and know if he's, if I can go over there and get some or if he's, if I got to go buy some. All right, real quick while I'm waiting for dad, I'm going to see if I can correct this little situation we got going on here. Uh, where can we, this back here will work. And Dad can't find them, so I guess I'm going to have to go buy some. we're over far enough I can still cut my hole that should be plenty Next we're only going 30 square so that'll be plenty
good enough. And here, the crescent wrench. Okay, I ended up having to run all the way to Niles because the hardware store here in town, they had edgers, but they were out naturally. So I got an edger and I got a mag float. So luckily it looks like we, yeah. oh yeah, it's still plenty, still plenty soft. Yeah, it looks pretty decent. It might have still been a little on the soft side, but the, if anything else, have to let it dry a little bit more and then come back in or come back through and touch it up. But it's holding, so let it sit for a minute. I'm gonna go eat lunch and I'll come back and check All it out. All right. I went back through and re-edged it. It was actually holding pretty good. Basically, I just touched it up some. And now that side's filled up with water again, but it's still around, so I might have to check on it one more time yet tonight. And I got both jack posts on bigger feet now. And I picked the or jacked the barn up another quarter inch while I was at it. So now we're at two and a half inches of lift. Tell you what, it takes a lot to scare me, but jacking this thing up, listening to everything creaking and popping while you're underneath it, that's enough to scare you. So anyhow, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and just end this video today. My initial, I, I was going go, to go ahead and start laying up block today. The camera battery went from 40, 49% to nothing in that one minute of audio. The new camera shouldn't be so bad because... They had, they literally have cold weather batteries for them. I found them. They're, they're actual GoPro. They're cold weather batteries. So they're supposed to boost up to 40% in the cold. So I'm going to get some of those and see how well they work. But I still got to get some, get a different video editor for my new computer so that I can actually use the new camera. So I haven't made it that far yet. So anyhow, um, oh, I was going to start laying block up today, but with having to go get tools and stuff and getting later in the day and not wanting it to get cold on me, I opted not to, plus that way I don't got to work around wet concrete. So tomorrow's project is going to be laying that block up, which 
in theory, isn't going to take a whole lot of time to do. It's just you're going to have to lay in a few blocks, walk away for an hour to let the mortar set up so you're not sl starting to slump, and then let's come in and lay a few more. So it's probably going to take most of the day to lay in that. Let's see, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven block. It's probably going to take most of the day to lay that in just to keep them straight. So, but I'm going to do some out. I got some outside stuff I want to get done tomorrow while we're working on that. So, but before I wrap this up, this stuff just showed up. So I guess this will be a viewer mail segment. Um, normally I don't, I don't want people sending me stuff. It's not nothing I promote. It's not nothing that I actively, I, I don't want people doing it. But this guy's been a subscriber since shit damn near when I started and He's been bugging me about this stuff for better part of a year, and I finally let him do it. Um, I know what's in this box. I don't know what's in that box. So, let's, uh, we'll get you back far enough you can't see the shipping labels to protect the innocent. These should be hydraulic cover gaskets, which I don't think I'm going to open them all the way up, but there's two of them. Um, but they're an Agco. Agco part number 103836A, which if I remember right, I looked the part number up and I can't remember, but it seems like this is, don't quote me on this, I'd have to go back and re-look it up. I think these are the uh, top cover or the hydraulic cover gaskets or hydraulic transmission cover gaskets for a, uh, like a double lot or a 50 series, I think. Agco parts clip doesn't work that well on my phone, otherwise I'd go look it up. Actually, hold on a second, I can look it up for you right now. I'll just type in the part number in Google, because some I think that's actually how I did it the first time. Agco 103836A. Uh, yes, that would be for, that's what that is, is a top cover gasket for a double lot or a, uh, it would, a double lot or a 50 series that would go in between the hydraulic rock shaft housing and the rear end. Hopefully you didn't see that. In between the, the, uh, yeah, hydraulic unit and the uh, rear end casting. Now this, I don't know what's in here. I didn't know that he was sending this. I knew it was gaskets. I didn't know there was anything else. It's got a little bit of weight to it. series top link it's not even froze for the most part actually it's it's gray so it came off of a white but I'm guessing that's all that's in there have to get the not that it's super duper important to it functioning as a top link but for the quick attach function you need to get the ball lock freed up and then the rod that is your handle for the damn nuts gone but other than that it doesn't look like a bad top link well that'll probably end up going on the 4150 to replace the one I got on it now that's got 
homemade parts and just it's seen a better day. After we do a little bit of work to it. been viewer mail. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was everything. It just feels like box now. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. So anyhow, I guess. With that being said, Bob, I appreciate you sending me that stuff. Didn't have to do that, but we'll uh, find uses for it, especially that. That's definitely going on a 4150 after I get everything working on it. So, anyhow, I guess we'll uh, catch you guys tomorrow when we start laying up block, and I got a little bit of work I want to do with the mini outside. So, that's it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one.